Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Uh, Jeff sent me a video, which I'm going to show you in a minute, about the 100th meridian. Now, we all know that in Greenwich, we've got the zero meridian. I think we're quite proud of it, actually, uh, where you can go and stand with one foot on each side. But in America, the 100th meridian is as important to them as the zero is to us. It used to form a line where wagons used to go no further uh, because it was very dry and arid beyond it. And it was the railways that first pushed past. But Jeff's going to tell us a story about that. And he got me thinking, I think I need to go to Greenwich and have a look at our meridian line so that we can compare the two. But for now, here comes Jeff with his video all about it. <laughs> It's Jeff again, and I am coming to you today from the Texas Panhandle because I would like to tell you the story of a meridian, the only meridian in America that really amounted to anything or that people cared about. I'm talking about the 100th meridian. The explorer and second director of the U.S. Geological Survey, John Wesley Powell, was basically about the first person to give any thought to the 100th meridian. He considered it a brick wall and warned all of the settlers headed west to not even think about venturing any further west because it was too dry and too inhospitable. This was in stark contrast to the railroads who promised settlers heading west a Garden of Eden the 100th meridian runs directly through the city of Dodge City, Kansas. The city known for being in the middle of the Wild West is actually right on the dividing line between the East and the West. It is a line that runs completely across America from the North to the South. And it is also the dividing line where the Great Plains begin. The Great Plains is the endless sea of grass where the poet Carl Sandburg, as a young man wrote this poem. O oh, Prairie Mother, I am one of your boys. I have loved the prairie as a man with a heart shot full of pain over love. Here I know I will hanker after nothing so much as one more sunrise or a sky moon of fire doubled to the river moon of water. I speak of new cities and new people. I tell you the past is a bucket of ashes. I tell you tomorrow is a wind gone down, a sun dropped in the west. I tell you there is nothing in the world, only an ocean of tomorrows, a sky of tomorrows. I am a brother of the Cornhusker who say at sundown, tomorrow is a day. In 1866, as the railroads continued to push west, it was the Union Pacific that first reached the 100th meridian on October 6th, 1866. They considered it such a monumental feat that they stopped, erected a small sign, and had a celebration. Cozad, Nebraska today, and the site of the old train depot, where only a few blocks away runs Meridian Street, dividing the city in two. It is 4,451 miles from Meridian Street in Cozad, Nebraska, to London, England, the site of the original Zero Meridian. The 100th Meridian was very important to the settlers headed west in the wagon trains. The wagon trains began their travel west from several towns on the Missouri River from Independence to Council Bluffs, then followed routes west on both sides of the Platte River. Companies of wagons formed and the immigrants purchased supplies and the group followed the developing ruts west. 
James Miller's 1848 diary describes the provisions they took for the trip. They carried 200 pounds of flour for each person, 100 pounds of bacon for each person, a portion of cornmeal dried apples and peaches, beans, salt, pepper, rice, tea, coffee, sugar, and many smaller articles for such a trip, including a medicine chest, plenty of caps, powder, and lead. There was timetables given out to each group, which included that they should set out by mid-April at the latest, and the idea was to reach Fort Kearney at 99 degrees, 4 minutes, and 52 seconds by mid-May. You were supposed to reach Fort Laramie by mid-June and the South Pass by the 4th of July. That would put you in Oregon by mid-September at the latest. Fort Kearney and the 100th Meridian was the first place that you stopped to rest. It was the first goal to make by mid-May. The 100th Meridian was important even to the early settlers. We have come full circle, back to the Texas Panhandle and the endless sea of grass, right on the 100th Meridian. Remember everyone, think good thoughts, do good deeds, and I will see you on the next adventure. Thank you.